Hey YouTube, it's Robert and in today's video we are going to change out a wall sconce. Now this particular wall sconce is an exterior fixture, but this tutorial would also work if you're trying to change out a fixture inside of your home as well. And this is one of those very DIY friendly projects that doesn't take a long time to do, is a pretty inexpensive project and makes a really big impact on a room inside your house or the curb appeal of your home. So this particular style of light is called a jelly jar. You can kind of see by the style where it gets its name. Uh, and it's still very relevant. You can still buy these today, but I've never been a particular fan of this. I think it looks a little dated. And you can see that there's a lot of rust on the hardware here. So I'm changing it out for this modern light fixture that I picked up off of Amazon. This is a very popular product. You see this on a lot of modern homes that are just going for something clean and streamlined. Uh, I picked this because I felt like it would be one that for a lot of you watching, you would like this style and you'll know Know exactly what it looks like when it's complete. One of the other things I liked about this particular option was it has a dusk till dawn feature up at the top. So even if you have the switch engaged during the day, the light bulb will only turn on at night once the sun has dropped low enough for it to actually get dark outside. This sensor will automatically pick that up and turn your light on for you. So you don't have to worry about switching it on and off every day if you want to just leave it for the sensor to do that for you. So as you can see, this light is currently operated on a switch. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do before we go ahead and remove this is turn off the power to this uh, circuit on the breaker box so that there's no chance that we accidentally have that flip switched and give ourselves a shock while we're making this change. So in the disassembly, we're gonna start by removing our glass, which is just held in by these two screws. And we can actually just remove this by hand by loosening these. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove our light. Next up, we have two bolts, one on each side of our fixture that we're gonna go ahead and unscrew to remove this from the wall. All right, so now we have this plate. We're gonna go ahead and spin this and expose these two screws that we're gonna to need to remove to actually take this off. I do always recommend keeping all of our parts until we have determined that we don't need any of them for the install of the new, though our new lantern comes with everything that we need for mounting and installing it. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove our wire caps off of the wire so that we can disconnect the old wires from the wall entirely. There's the last of our fixture. So we have officially removed all of the components we need to from our old light, and we are left with our wires to connect our new light. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to just clean out the inside here where I have a lot of debris, and I would recommend you do the same at home. So as you can see, my new light did come with that hardware, and then separately, it has the pack of the uh, mounting bolts uh, to bracket this into the wall as well as my wire caps. Now you'll notice that these new bolts are significantly shorter than the screws that were used in there before. So that's why I hold on to those so that if for whatever reason the new ones don't reach far enough or I want to be able to screw that in even further and make sure that it's you know really secure and not ever going to accidentally work its way out, um, I have that option of reutilizing the same ones uh, that were in there. You'll notice here on this right side, my bolt's just spinning around. It's not really biting into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that original screw that I had before so I can make sure it's driving all the way in there. This other side I could have used the, the new bolt, but I'm using both of these screws because they are just giving me a lot more bite on this so I have a much more secure bracket. 
All right, so now we get to the fun part here. I've got my neutral wire coming out, which is my white wire. I have my black wire, which is gonna be my hot wire. And then I have my exposed copper wire, which is my ground wire. We're gonna connect these white to white, black to black, and then our ground wire to our ground wire. But we're gonna start by also wrapping our ground wire around our ground nut on the bracket just to securely ground our bracket as well. So we get our ground wire wrapped around our ground bolt there and tighten that in to lock it in place. So next up we need to connect our wires and you're gonna notice we have some wires that are already bundled up in here with some electrical tape around them and a zip tie that's been cut off here. We don't need to do anything with these wires. These are the wires that are operating our sensor. So we just need to worry about connecting our white to our white wire, our black to our black wire, and our copper wire to the ground. And then as I mentioned, we're gonna connect our ground wire to our ground in this case. These are both exposed copper wires. It's also very common that the ground is a green wire. And we put our wire nut cap on each of these as we're going. Connect our neutrals. And our hot wire. not important what order we do this in again our power is completely off to this uh, we just need to make sure that we're connecting the right wires to each other now we're tucking the wires in back into the box so that they don't get in the way as we mount our fixture here You want to make sure you twist these bolts all the way out so that they're fully extended and that they reach through uh, the front of our plate. So now when we slide our plate on, we have plenty to screw into on each side. Then we're going to take our little cap Screw that onto each side. Now once we've got both of our caps secured and we can feel that our wall plate is securely mounted to the wall, we are ready to put our bulb in, turn everything back on and test it out. And a side note guys, we wanna make sure that the bulb that we put is an E26 base style and it doesn't exceed 100 watt max. And those are both in the instructions as to what type of bulb that this calls for, but I just wanted to make sure I pointed it out as well. And now you guys can find out how many YouTubers it takes to screw in a light bulb. There we go. And now with the power back on, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my switch and we can see that it's working. Now what I really wanna see is because it's during the day right now, so when I flip my switch and leave it on, my sensor should pick up the fact that it's plenty of light outside and actually turn off on its own. So here we've got it switched on and we're gonna wait and see. And there we go. It switched off on its own and I would expect that once the sun sets, me leaving the switch on, it will just go ahead and light up and I'll never have to worry about actually flicking that switch on and off unless I want it kept off during the night. And for those of you that like the look of an Edison bulb, here's a quick look at that. It's a little bit of a warmer glow, but I probably will actually stick with an Edison bulb myself. And then we'll come back and see what it looks like at night. And here's a real quick look at it at night for you guys with the Edison bulb in there. Uh, I really like the overall style. It's just clean, simple, and modern for those of you who are after that. 
think it's extremely versatile as to what kind of home this could go on. And uh, I like the glass panels, so, you know, the quality for the price is great. It is open bottomed, uh, but as you can see, you know, I've had this on for a little while tonight and there's no bugs flying up in there or anything. And uh, I assume any that die up there are just gonna fall right out. And it makes it real easy for you to change the bulb. So uh, I definitely recommend this one uh, for any of you who like that clean modern look. So this is a quick little project that took like less than 10 minutes to do. I would say you know 10-15 minutes really is all that you should need if you remove your old fixture. There's no major surprises and we're just swapping one for another. And I'll have all the links to this product and anything else that you might need for this project down in the description below. Comment if you have any additional questions or if there's anything that I forgot to go into detail on and be sure to hit that thumbs up button for me if you found this helpful. Again, my name's Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. So until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.